Yeah, well, how you said it? He said, I got those goonies around. I got those toolies around. You get hit with 50 rounds on my nigga Mooney around. Yeah, greetings. This is Brother Dawood. You know, today I want to touch on the one and only Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, a.k.a. Little Doogie, a.k.a. Baby Gangster. You know, BG resided in Uptown New Orleans on VL, which is the Violence and Magnolia. He lived with his family. They lived in a, like a ran down shotgun type house in that area. And BG was just like any other child when they young and they in their innocence. They not even touched or involved with that life until something transpired. Now, BG Pops, his father was out there in the game when BG was young. And um, I know some of you might have heard or know of, and when people told me that his father was like set up to be robbed. They had tied his father up because his father was out there getting how he lived. They tied him up to try to find out where his stash was. And he didn't tell him where his stash was when he's out there in the game. And they killed him. And at this time when this whole thing happened, BG was 12 years of age. He was 12. And this whole event triggered a mentality in BG of not giving a what or giving a fuck, so to say. You follow? So, BG jumped off the porch at that same time. He was 12 years of age. He jumped out there. He started selling cocaine and all that stuff. You know, hanging out in the Violence Magnolia area. You know, hanging out. With certain dudes out there in the street, you know, he started getting into trouble. But while he was doing all that, BG was um writing his raps and um and freestyling different things. And then one day, you know, um Baby and Slim was at the barber shop in that area, and the dude that by the name of Big Stan, you can see him on that video here on YouTube. Um, when they in a barber shop on the um, let the hood speak um, Birdman um, Williams um episode when they in a barber shop talking to the dude Big Stan and he was talking about um how Baby was when he was coming up. Well, he was the dude that introduced Baby and Slim to BG. He told him he said, I know this young dude. You know he's very talented. I think you should hear of him because um Stan knew that Slim and Baby had their record label. They was already, you know, popping locally. They had local acts on the app at the uh, on a uh, roster at that time. They had um Kilo G, they had um UNLV, they had Pimp Daddy, um Miss T, I believe Mr. Iron, um and a couple other people. But uh, he introduced them. So, BG had spit a rhyme for Slim and Baby. They loved what they heard. And from there on, the rest was history. They took him in under their wing. They brought him in and signed him with Cash Money Records. You follow? BG didn't have a single um, album out yet. He was featured on other um, artists' album before he got his break. And um, it was in 1995. BG and um, Lil Wayne hooked up. And they had formed a group called the BGs. But at this time, while they was the BGs, you know, they had different names. It wasn't, um, BG wasn't called BG. And Lil Wayne wasn't called Lil Wayne. BG was called Lil Doogie, and Lil Wayne was called 
um, Baby D. You know, the um, the album was a fire album. It did very good locally. And um, this album was like a very um, famous album because on this album, BG was sending shots at Mr. Crew as far as dissing him and everything. Because at this time, Cash Money and Big Boy Records had a little beef in the city because they both was popping locally and all that there. So this whole thing come about because um, partners in crime felt like you and LB were trying to steal their style and all that. So this was started the whole Cash Money and Big Boy beef. And you know, um, BG, I think he dissed Mr. Cool like, what, um, two times in that album, calling him a cheerleader and all that stuff. And also, BG had this, um, G Slim, you know, who was another, um, label, um, mate for Big Boy Records. He was calling him a fake crip and all that stuff like that. And I know some of you probably heard that album. It's the, um, the G Slim album on Big Boy, you know. And matter of fact, um, G Slim, who I'm going to be doing a video on one day real soon, he was responsible for um, Big Boy getting a deal. Everybody think it was mystical, but I'm going to touch on that later. But BG and um, Lil Wayne, that album was a success. But then they had to change their name. They had to get rid of the name the BGs as a group because um you know the pop group called the BGs that white group they people sent um Slim and Baby uh, uh I forgot what you call that paper. I know it's something like a I don't want to say subpoena but they 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 told them they couldn't use that name because it's um copyright infringement you know because of the name the BGs and all that so Slim and Baby was forced to shut down and um get rid of that name. They couldn't use the BGs no more. You follow? So now, you know they had to change their name because of the um the group the BGs. Um and at this time, this is like um in 1995. Um BG, I believe he's around 15 years of age. He dropped out of school. To really focus on his music at the same time when he did all this there he started um really becoming addicted to heroin you know and it's funny because when you hear a lot of people say different things about bg or you read the comments of some of these videos they say stuff like yo when bg was messing with that stuff man he was better man they be saying little smart remarks like Yo, I wish BG get back on heroin because he was really kicking that shit when he was on it. Like, his music is much better. Yo, that's mad crazy for people to say that. But, um, that's what a lot of people said, you know. You follow? So now, you're gonna roll around to 1996, right? 1996. BG comes out with his first solo um, album, which is called Chopper City. And on that album... It had did like 200,000 copies, you know, locally with really no major um, promotion, you know. And I believe that um, it was Southwest that was like the distributor of their um, work, Cash Money work. But on that album, he had numerous features. He had um, the one and only, the Magnificent, one of my best producers. Manny Fresh and um Baby as the big timers. You know, Juby was on that album too. Remember, at this time, Cash Money, I mean, not Cash Money, the Hot Boys wasn't formed yet. So BG was on the album. I mean, I mean, Juvenile was on that album. Juvenile already had little stuff before he came to Cash Money as an artist. That's another um, topic for another time. Bun B was on that album. You had the Ziggler Wiggler. The Ziggler Wiggly. You know what I'm saying? You had um Miss T was on that album. The girl named Keisha who was doing the hook on that song. You, you had um Baby Nephew, you know what I'm saying? Lil Derek or Bulletproof, I should say. And then you had my song that I loved on that album the most. 
um one of the songs that really stuck out to me it was um the song called um niggas in trouble which featured mac they had that that they sampled many fresh sampled that beat that song called sadie and he used that for the beat for that song with um bg and mac you follow but well, i remember i was playing that song one time and um you know how certain dudes in certain regions in this country you know, they was like, oh, who that? That's Nas? I never heard that Nas song. I said, no, nah, that's not Nas. It's, it's a dude named Matt. You know, he's, 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 he's from um, the South. It's like, oh, shit, that shit sound dope. You know, you follow? But that was that 1996 album, that Chopper City. So, that whole thing went through as far as 96. Then we come into 97, which was a very busy year for BG. In 1997, BG dropped two, he dropped like two albums, solo albums, that um, is All On You, Volumes 1 and 2. And plus, this the year that the Hot Boys is formed. And they dropped the album called um, Get It How You Live. And when the, when the Hot Boys was first formed, it was five, it was five members. It was BG himself, Juvie. Or Juvenile, Lil Wayne, Turk, and Baby Nephew, Lil Derek, or Bulletproof. And immediately after they finished doing this album, Bulletproof, or Lil Derek got off the label for um for some reason. I'm going to talk about that another time. But this album did good locally, 1997 and everything. And then um, and it was said too that right before this whole Hot Boys thing, came together that BG and Turk had to have a battle to each other. They had to diss each other, you know, and they wanted to see who was the better out of the two. And um, Baby and Slim felt what they was getting from Turk as far as his um, energy, as far as rapping. So this is how the whole Hot Boys was formed and came together. And on that, that album had their 400,000 copies, you know, to get it how you live. So... Now we're going to come into the ultimate year, which is 1998, when um, Cash Money inked that $30 million deal with Universal. You know, Baby and Slim was given a $3 million advance for other things as far as the label and all that there. And they had a deal where they had, um, was it was like a, a joint venture where they would be able to keep 50% of the publishing and plus, they had it where whatever thing, as far as not, this is outside of publishing, but any time an album sell, that they get 85% of the album sales. And people, it's just two different things. You got the 85% of each album sale that Cash Money was getting, and then they was able to keep 50% of their publishing off this deal. And this is 98. And then um, Juvenile... 400 Degrees album came out, which did four times platinum, you know, and at that same time frame, that same year, that's when the Hot Boys Guerrilla Warfare album came out, and this is the beginning, or not really the beginning, but this was when, when Universal was the machine behind Cash Money, that Cash Money feel that they could have, they really, they they full assault attack on no limit records because there was different things that have happened prior to this deal, you know. But I'm gonna talk about that beef. But that Guerrilla Warfare album came out, and there was a song on it called Help by BG. And on that song, he was sending shots at No Limit, you know. But on that, um, that was a fire album. But that same year, BG came out with that Chopper City and the Ghetto album. No, I think it was, yeah, 98, 99, right after that. And one of the most notable songs of all times that came for Cash Money is the Bling Bling. That was on BG album. And it's crazy because people accredit the Bling Bling to Lil Wayne because he was the one doing the chorus. 
but Bling Bling is actually a, a BG song. And I remember Baby was like, damn, he wish he would have trademarked that term Bling Bling because it is used so much that it's used in the movies and all that that he wish he would have trademarked it. And that anytime somebody wanted to use the Bling Bling word, that on a TV or all that, he get paid for it. You know, and you know, blinging, it means like shining or gleaming. You know, uh, talking about that flamboyant lifestyle as far as hopping in the nice cars. You know, splashing with the dopest gear and all that. And having the, the banging jewelry game and, you know, your wheels or your shoes shining on your, um, on your car. You know what I'm saying? You follow? So, the No Limit and Cash Money. Beef has numerous elements. Well, some of the artists that P picked up was from Big Boy Records. You know, you have your own um, mystical. So, and then No Limit was already being accused of stealing and mimicking other people. And Cash Money felt that, all right, New Orleans, our home. This is our shit here. We run this. P coming from California, coming back to the NO, putting his flag down and taking over everything, so to say. So cash money for some type of way. So you had different people that was already beefing with cash money records. So it was rumored that P round up all these people and got them down with him on the L. It was said that P was the one that had um funded Sporty T and Batman to put out that Wild Boys album. Yeah. And and Cash Money always felt that, you know, that P was um always biting them. And you remember the the Hot Boys movie that Silk came out with? I already told you in the previous video about that situation where they was at a venue with on uh, Cash Money. And they showed Baby the promotion for the Hot Boys movie that P and was putting out, and they said that Baby snapped. He took the um, I think it was an album cover or something. He he slammed it and said, "See, this is shit I'm talking about. This nigga stealing everything. You know that's gonna be another video for another time though, but um." So you got that whole time frame where um cash money and and it was like they, they fund them. And on that album, the Wild Boys album that came out, they were sending mad shots out at all of them. Not I never heard really mention Slim, but they talking about baby on that whole album. It took about BG, Wayne, Turk, and Juvenile. And the artists that was getting at them there was um, Sporty T, Crazy, Power Four Boy Crazy, um, Freedom Short Circuit from New York. He did that song called Click Click. Every time I catch you in New York City, click click. Get you for your jewels, you robbed. You had um, P Cousins, the Young Guns, on that song called uh, Calm Down. From my block, from your city. Remember that song? Y'all niggas need to calm down or get your head bust. She said, fuck the high boys. It's all about the YGs. Reginelli. Remember that shit? But, you know, um, there was numerous tracks that Cash Money ain't that no limit. You know, the, the, the stand they ground. But, you know, BG was the one that was really... Putting out those tracks like that because you know and um and juvenile too and little Wayne you know on the block is hot, so the beef didn't really last that long you know it started phasing out and all that, but um around this time I see like we got into like the ninety nine two thousand era, um this is when Universal had hit up Baby and them to do a movie. And the movie that they did was called the um, Baller Blockers. That was shot in um, Uptown Durwood and the Magnolia. You know, at this time, the Six Court was knocked down. Well, it wasn't knocked down. It was bacon and gated. That's why you don't really see them 
in that movie necessarily in the um, six court and um, Willow Court area. You'll see pieces of it in the movie, but it's abandoned. They mainly like in the um, Taladana Court and all that. You know, in the LD, the last driveway, mainly in those areas shooting the baller blocker. But um, if you look at that movie, you know, um, BG character was hilarious. He was like, man, fuck that nigga Curly Head, man. Curly Head was that cop, you know. But you see the part where um, AJ Johnson was um, fucking with um, BG in the movie, you know. But that was a good movie, The Baller Blocker, you know. Cause everybody did. I think they did a good job with that movie, though. And then we go into... to. Um, but at the same time, BG gets a call from um Loud Records to um collab up with um Prodigy to do a song called um YBE stands for Young Black Entrepreneurs, and um they flew BG out to New York to record the song actually in the studio with Prodigy and shoot the video, you know, and a lot of dudes from different coasts was feeling um BG and um. You know, I told you I got family in New York, so when that song came out, they played that song like crazy. And they also they played on one of six and park like that too. But you know, BG was getting um touched. Not touched, I mean he was getting um called to do numerous com co uh, collaborations, but they was turning down certain people because that cheddar wasn't looking right. You follow? So BG comes out with his album, the Checkmate album, and then there was a um a note a notice that went out saying that BG was gonna no longer be down with um the Hot Boys no more, that he was leaving the group. But the truth of the matter is that BG was going to um rehab because of his habit of heroin got like off the hook. So. This right by that time too, when it was the Cash Money and Rough Rider tour. So BG started feeling a certain way. Especially when he heard about that whole thing of how much that the Cash Money Rough Rider um tour had um grossed. And he started feeling a certain way, like, wait a minute. I understand this and that, but where my fair share of it, you know? He felt like um, Baby and Slim was getting the lion's share of the money and that, you know, the money wasn't being distributed properly. I remember BG saying, you know, Baby called Surf the Bird Man and all that, but he trying to bird feed a nigga, you know? And he felt a certain way. So he was getting his mind right as he was cleaning stuff up from the heroin. And then, um... He even said, he said, man, this, you know, this nigga baby got like 30 to 40 cars. I got five cars and all that. He said, I'm living decent and all right. But baby was like, listen, man, if I got it, you don't have to want for nothing. I got your back there. But he said, no, nah, I want to be able to hold my own money. Because baby's like, no, nah, I'm going to hold your money on because I don't want you to blow it all in one spot and all that. And BG was like, man, I got my moms, my aunts, and they can hold on to my money. I want my money in my own hands. So this is where the whole thing where um they broke up and um B I mean BG left. He wound up hooking up with um TI. But when he hooked up with TI, right? TI said he wasn't gonna um put him necessarily directly on Grand Hustle, but he was gonna create a situation where BG have his own thing and um and get distribution through Atlanta Records. And the reason for um TI doing is because he said one of his favorite and best artists was BG. He always looked up to BG and he felt BG since he was a child. So he felt that was an honor for him. To be the plug BG and to have his own situation. You follow? So now, BG's in Atlanta staying with TI, getting his mind right and all that. And then he connect back with the streets. When he connect with the streets, you know, he formed Chopper City Records. 
he had his own label mates, you know, Kappa City, you know, his his brother and them, and um, um, BL Mike, and the rest of them, right? And then he plugs in and connects and get back out, get down there in the streets with the Hanktons. And I remember BG saying, you know what? I'm about to make this thing to where Baby can't be able to come back into New Orleans. I'm going to make it to where he can't come back to the hood because of the money that was owed to him and all that. So, if you notice, when he came out with his own imprint, he was dissing Baby Hard in that album that he came out with. Um... Damn, I can't remember the name of the album. What's the first album that he put out on um his own imprint? He said, I ain't going. He said, I ain't going back to baby. Stop asking me. You know, <laughs> he's saying a lot of stuff on that album. This is a 2003. And around the same time, this is when BG also hooked up with Slim. So they was coming together. And if you notice... They did. There was a video called uh, "I Keep It Gangster," where BG and Slim is riding in that drop top car, and it's epic because it was a time people used to think that BG and Slim was real blood brothers. People should say all this crazy stuff. Oh, they got the same father, this and that. It was like hearsay, but they was coming together and do projects. And do you hear all the wild stories? You know because, um. BG cousin and um I mean I'm sorry so so the slim cousin and um uh, BG had a little beef and he was saying stuff that you know um Slim wasn't really cool with um BG like that he was only using him and all that to get a breakthrough in the music industry and all that and then you had um also BL Mike who was also coming at who was the one that BG put on that was coming at um, BG a certain way and started saying stuff down the line, you know? And BL Mike tripped out and snapped because he felt that it was certain promises that wasn't kept from BG. And, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of elements to that, you know? And. He felt them promises wasn't being fulfilled and all these different things. So he started coming at um, BG Neck making this songs and all that. Um, BG never responded back to VL Mike. You know, you follow. But I'm sorry, but I, I forgot to mention too that when, um, when BG left Cash Money, he was beefing with Wayne too. Like they was going back and forth sending subliminal shots. And um it was to the point that even Trina, who Wayne was messing with at one time, tried to diss BG. So BG and um BL Mike got together. They did a, a, a diss song, but um BG was dissing Wayne on that song, and BL Mike is dissing um Trina. So VL Mike, who was an um, a artist under um, Chopper City Records, he eventually got killed on the street, you know. And people were saying stuff. Man, I think, you know, BG sent that hit, you know. It was, and, and VL was already involved with a lot of shit that happened on the street anyway. But they tried to tag that up with, um, on BG. And then also, this later on down the line too, um, Slim Cousin 12 O'Clock, that started before BG, he wound up um, getting hit up. But when Slim got killed in 2003 on his mother's lawn, you know, BG had did a song with Chaotic in them. And I remember at the end of that song, he was saying something about he gonna put money out there to find out who done that to Slim. In two different places. And he said, you know, three different places. When he find out who actually did that to Slim, he gonna put change on. He gonna put those 10 G's on them to get them got for taking Slim out. You follow? But it's crazy because you have people say the stuff that, you know, Slim was this. He ain't really care about BG. But from what I saw and what I got from their relationship, man, there was a, a genuineness there. Like they had a, a real connection with each other. 
I don't think that um Slim was using no um BG. You know, and they go way back really before when this whole thing took off anyway. You know, Slim from out of the Magnolia. Six court. And um BG's from Violence and Magnolia. You know, and it's like right there like a block away from each other, so they they hung out, they they, they tread each other's path, you know, they rolled and did different things together in the past as youngsters, so there was always this um this generosity there, I mean this um connection there, genuineness. So now you got BG now, he up there with the Hank Tens, he out there in the streets, you know. This is when BG four started really coming about, you know. But BG did a um 2005 a, co a collaboration with C Murder. C Murder was locked up though on that song called "You Ain't Never Heard of Me." That song was like some um, Calio projects tag teaming or connecting up with the Magnolia. And I told you, even though um, BG is from Violence and Magnolia Street or area, he still from Magnolia by proxy, so they brought both of the projects together. And if you look at that video, you see all those Calio boys up in there. You know, Cut Boys, you see um Tough Guy Dodo, you see Mr. S. Calio, you see um what's his name? Um Mr. Marcello's out of the Magnolia. You see all them boys from both projects all up in that video. So, you know, um this is something that was overdue because it should have been a cash money no limit collab but it was the two label heads that had problems with each other so c had true records bg had chapter c so they brought it together on their own accord it wasn't necessarily a direct no limit cash money collab but you know how it is so um they did the album it was a success and then you get down to the whole beef with um, BG and Birdman brother Terrence Gangster Williams. You know, there was some paperwork that came out on Terrence Gangster Williams saying that he started, he, in order to get his time reduced, he started saying certain stuff about people, telling the system how he could um, help them and they could reduce his time and all that. So he started um telling. So there's a video on YouTube, the BG song called um uh, I Ain't Telling. And in the beginning of the video, you got BG and Hot Bizzle sitting in the car. He comes up with the paperwork, and then Hot Bizzle was like, Yo, damn man, you telling on the dead man? You telling on come on man, you know they up there talking. And then you had BG said, you know, um, TYC, take your charge. And then the song comes on and stuff like that. And then there was this interview that they did on Terrence Gangster Williams. And he was trying to disrespect and clown BG talking about, uh, you can't, he don't deserve the name BG. His name is Christopher. And he was trying to say that BG is a replica of him on a music level. And he was like, um, BG ain't about all that stuff he's talking about. He's talking about other guys' life in the city and all that. And he's like, the guy you call Alton to buy Hot Bizzle, I made him. He said, I'm responsible for his street cred. I made him and all that. So, you know, this whole thing was like crazy. But, you know, um, that was like the last time you ever heard from uh, Terrence Gangster Williams and all that. So you had that whole thing going on, and then um, PG really started, you know, becoming like negligent, so to say, you know, being on videos, you know, waving guns, and and um, he had got arrested. He had got caught with a car with three guns in it, and um, drugs and all that. He got caught. They let him go. You know, so um, he got out. He had did a um 
of some called Guilty by Association. And in that song, he's with um, Walter Mooney Porter. And they use BG lyrics against him, you know. And um, it said that, you know, um, the Bayou Street legend, um, Walter Mooney Porter, he was um, an accomplished hitman and a bank robber and a reputed drug dealer once at the top of the Dirty South underworld. And it said that BG, not, yeah, um, that Porter or Mooney appeared in the, um, as a, a cameo in that rap video that is named, um, Guilty by Association. And I know you heard me quote the lyrics at the beginning of this video, but, um, and it said that, you know, he was the uh, enforcer for the, um, Hankton Drug Organization, you know, who was responsible for, like, high-profile racketeering and murdering and, um, the notorious Big Easy, you know, and, um, they call him, on um, Wild Telly Hankton, you know. He's the cousin of one of the OGs of Apple Eagle from back in the day called, um, Cop Hankton, you know. Who had um got killed previously? I'm gonna do a video on that too. But you know, um, he was the um Porter was the Hankton um main muscle out there. He's a professional assassin, you know, and he was tied into like nine contract killings and stuff like that. And um, BG was saying too much. People felt on that um on them songs and doing too much on those videos and being out there and there's another video too you'll see bg pointing in the background and um mooney's in the background i think he's like in an expedition or something like that and it zoomed the camera zoomed in on them and you know how the system is they're already looking at you already because you 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 successful as a musician and they feel that all right yeah maybe these guys really living what they're talking about so they're gonna keep their eye on them and that's exactly what happened, you know. Um, he wound up um, getting 14 years, 14 years behind this whole thing. That in the video with the guns, because they wanted BG to tell. Yo, who was this or who was that in the video? And um, BG yelled, um, TYC, take your charge. And when the judge asked him, was he the famous this BG and all that? He said, "Yes, I'm. I'm the famous BG, and I have um a universal fan base. I have a large fan base and all that. So he was um sentenced for 14 years because um he was like um he said I got those goonies around who keep those toolies around. Niggas get hit 50 times." If my nigga Mooney around. And they tied what he said to a real incident that really happened. A real incident that really happened. And this and all the other stuff that BG was involved with. They, 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 they tallied all that shit together. And they hit my man up with 14 years. And I'm going to say this though. I love the Hot Boys as a group. I know all of them. They all had their own specialty, you know. He, I mean, juvenile, he's like known for that putting out that that bounce shit and the chant shit, you know. Lil Wayne is like the he's like the entertainer. He comes with it, um, lyrically. You know, Turk. He's like a a mixture. He's like a someone like a, a connected to what like Lil Wayne, so to say, but he still have his own style, you know. He have his own um, strength. But BG, BG captures the streets, man. He really captures it. Like, when you listen to how he put his words together and how he spit it, he captures it. That's why he said BG, he's the heart of the street. And I really articulate the street shit. He really articulates it. The way how he articulates it, like no other. You follow? 
and right now, you know, um, you have his his son out there who was doing his thing in the music industry. You know, he had gave a report like maybe like a year ago. He was saying that BG time may be reduced and all that there. But um, we'll see what happened. And one thing that I forget to mention, and I feel bad for I mentioned it, is before when little um Boosie was before he did his big time. Um, BG and, and Lil Boosie was working on some stuff, and before he got locked up, BG went out there to see little um Boosie at his um house with his family and all that, and they was talking. And he was like, "Yo, Lil bro, I'ma hold you down. Um, when you do your time and all, I'm here for you and all that, you know." And also, BG was that same dude that the only one who looked out for Turk when Turk was locked out. You know, what I'm saying sending him. Money is commissary and all that. Why everybody else forgot about Turk, you know? But, um, BG, I, you know, I, I like all the hot boys, but BG is my favorite hot boy. You follow? Shalom. Salams. Godspeed.